Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Complex Document Processing Tasks Made Easy. I'm Sean Magali, Director of Content at AIM, and AIM is your host and producer of today's event. With me today are Eric House from VIA Consulting and Kevin Bender from ASG Technologies. ASG, in partnership with VIA, are the underwriters of today's webinar. We thank them for their support, and we thank you for taking the time to join us today. Before we get started, let me share a few tips for participating in today's webinar. By joining our live event, you can resize the windows in front of you, open group chat to message with each other and with us, download the resources we have for you, and ask questions of the speakers with the Q&A feature. Later, please take the survey. We truly value your feedback on how we did today. And this webinar is being recorded and will be posted to AIM.org's resources webinars page in a few days. Now I'd like to introduce our host for today. Kevin Crane is AIM's content strategist and host of our very popular AIM On Air podcast. Kevin? Hi, Sean. Thanks a lot. It's my pleasure to be hosting this event, another in a continuing series of AIM webinars. This time to talk about complex document processing tasks made easy. And, you know, pick any process for any core business activity for any organization, large or small, in any industry. And you can bet there are documents at the heart of the workflow. So as a result, process automation and document processing techniques applied to improve core processes work in a real, very real way to improve the performance of any organization. So I think it's important what we're talking about today, but it can be difficult to reach those goals that end because the more complex the process is and the more complex the documents are that are involved in the workflow, the more complex and difficult the effort is to automate and improve the, the entire process. So today we're going to explore that. We're going to hear a case study that explores that journey and examines the issues faced in many organizations with more complex automation projects surrounding really big and important things like regulatory compliance and customer service and the ability to automate the receipt of first contact information, which is especially important for things like an insurance claim, for example. And indeed, we're going to be exploring a case study from the insurance industry as a benchmark for improving the workflow and the process that we can all learn from. So today, I am pleased to welcome to the event Eric House, Enterprise Sales Director with Zia Consulting, and Kevin Bender, Strategic Specialist for content, content services for ASG. Now, Kevin and Eric, welcome to the event today. Eric, tell us a little bit more. Absolutely, thanks Thanks for your time there, Kevin. Uh, so one of the things that we're really gonna focus on today um, in terms of trying to uh, go after you know, complex document processing is really gonna be around focusing on customer experiences and, and how to improve those by automating some of those content, uh, those content and document processes as well. So uh, actually, let's, let's, yep, I'm sorry, go ahead, Kevin. No, very good. I, I'm eager to hear more, so please go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. So as, as we continue, we're going to talk about the, the current environment uh, of what we see, and I think it's going to be very prevalent, especially within uh, 2020 and, and how document processing has kind of evolved with a, a more remote workspace. Um, and then we're going to talk about five crucial steps for transformation and growth. So as Kevin alluded to, uh, you know, there is going to be a, an insurance aspect and an insurance flavor to some of these case studies and, and examples, but really the, the problems that you're going to see around transformation and growth, I think, can apply to almost any vertical. So feel free to ask questions, whether it be pertaining to insurance or even if you want to take some of these concepts and apply it to your industry, we, we encourage you to be able to talk, uh, be able to ask questions around that as well. So around the current environment, and this is just the, the overarching um, theme of what we're looking at in terms of how to process these documents, what you're seeing now is, is very savvy customers. So, you know, you'll hear ad nauseum around how Amazon has really changed the, the expectations of customers. But when it comes to, you know, traditional brick and mortar businesses or businesses that have been around for, for many decades, you're going to have customers that now approach those businesses and they have what we, what we call analog inputs with digital expectations. So, for instance, at an insurance company, you might still have an insurance company where the requirements are to still uh, submit a physical document or a paper document that has handwriting on it. 
well, as an insurance company who's, who's taking that as an input, how do you get back a digital expectation or digital experience or a quick turnaround in order to provide back and, and meet those customer expectations? So what we're seeing is uh, in order to really grow in, in most industries now, uh, these customers are not necessarily as price sensitive. It's more around the customer experience that's really going to be the differentiator. Um, and then for the actual, uh, for you as a, as a company, or, you know, in this case, you know, what we're talking about, a little bit about insurance companies, but you as a, as a company, you understand that you might have multiple customers that you need to serve. So whether that be your, your traditional, if you have a, uh, a distribution network, so in which case we're talking about brokers and agents, but if you work in, a, in an aspect where you have multiple sellers that are outside your organization that are working on your behalf as an agent, they are considered customers and they have specific needs. Uh, you might have your more traditional um, customers that are end users of, of your product or service. So we might look at those as group policy administrators or policyholders in terms of insurance. Um, and then lastly, you've got your internal customers. You, you've got a, a, an aging workforce um, that is that is used to certain technologies. A, a newer workforce is coming in that, that wants to interact with uh, the technologies in a, in a very specific way. Uh, so being able to, to meet the needs of your internal customers is, is very important as well. So joining me today is also uh, Kevin Bender from ASG Technologies. Ke Kevin, any, any thoughts around what you're seeing within the, the current environment overall? Yeah, Eric, I, I do see a, a significant um, bend towards uh, the customer experience side, uh, whether that is for internal or external stakeholders. I, I definitely, you know, with, with everyone having smartphones and, and, you know, different kinds of apps they can use to capture information, they want to have that experience, uh, you know, with the companies that they, they do business with um, in terms of communication. And uh, I see that as, you know, mobility as a, as a major trend, kind of a mega trend in our industry. It has been for a while, but I really see it ramping up uh, lately. And I think that, you know, uh, as a result of the current pandemic, I think there's uh, even more of a uh, emphasis on it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, people, people uh, you know, definitely seem to be a bit more sensitive in terms of, you know, expectations around turnaround time and, and customer experience. And I think with all this time at, at home, at our, at our home offices now, we <laughs> give uh, idle hands a, a bit much more to do. So, uh, so let's talk about the, the first kind of theme in terms of when it comes to trying to improve your overall customer experiences and trying to automate some of these documents. So the, the, the term I'm going to use here is called one call resolution rate. And, and really the thrust of the, the theme here is um, for someone who's calling in to a customer service center to make an inquiry, uh, the, the measurement that you're looking at is, well, can you solve their, their question or concern on one phone call? Uh, many companies have grown uh, over the years, whether it be organically or due to acquisition, but oftentimes, uh, specifically within insurance companies, if you start to acquire other books of business or other, other insurance carriers, as you start to bring on their customers to be your customers, in order to find the relevant information that's pertaining to that customer, it can become more and more difficult. Um, you know, whether it be if you need to consolidate contact management systems, if you need to consolidate where your contracts are kept, if you need to consolidate your, your underwriting systems or depending on the types of products that you might sell, there's a lot to consider. Um, and there's also a statistic around there of when one company is acquiring another company, um, the revenues or the production of that company is somewhere in the range of only 80% of normal. Um, and in some cases might be as low as 60 or 70% of normal. So in which case you're looking at something that while you're trying to combine multiple systems and multiple companies, uh, your, your, your ability to be able to react because of all of a sudden you're much bigger and, and much more, many more customers to accommodate for uh, becomes less and less. So, you know, yesterday's insurance company is what we're seeing here. It's a series of holds and transfers or, you know, we'll, we'll have to get back to you on that and follow up. Um, and oftentimes it leads to a poor customer service. So what we're seeing is in order to prove those, those rates of uh, one call resolution, it's being able to, you know, you might have legacy systems, so being able to provide one, uh, what might be one user interface that interacts uh, with the, some of those systems on the back end, and we'll talk about that in our next slide. It's really about even for your internal customers, uh, the customer service agents, are they going to, you know, what types of systems are they going to have to use? Are those systems easy to use at all? Um, we understand, uh, you know, being in, in the system integrating business that, you know, trying to rip and replace a customer service portal or trying to rip and replace a, uh, customer management uh, portal where all your documents are held is not an easy project. Um, oftentimes what makes the most sense is be able to provide a simplified user interface that on the back end can automate a lot of those system changes. 
Uh, the example I like to use is around uh, a, uh, a name change request. So say, for instance, you have someone who just gets married and they need to change their last name on their policy. Well, to them, it's very simplistic. They, they fill out the form, they send it into the insurance company, and the insurance company on the back end should be able to take care of the rest. Well, to the insurance company, they need to then update their customer management system. They need to update their, their claim system in case you make a claim. Uh, they need to update the, the legal contract system, so they need to issue new contracts. Um, and they also need to update their, their billing systems as well. It's, it's a multiple set of changes, and oftentimes these things are not automated. So there's also a, a, a chance for uh, incorrect data to be entered, which leads to poor customer experiences as well. And all these things at the end of the day can snowball after so many bad customer experiences and lead them to uh, moving to another carrier. And we know that customer acquisition costs are, are not cheap, so you want to try and maintain your customers as long as you can while you have them. So when it comes to being able to provide one system interface to be able to uh, work with all your various systems on the back end, we call that federation. Um, and Kevin, I'm, I'm going to throw to you here a little bit. You want to talk a little bit more about how federation services work? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Eric. Um, yeah, the next couple of slides, uh, certainly about federation, it's a topic that uh, we often solve for our clients. Um, I'll, I'll address it uh, a bit in terms of what it is and maybe how uh, it fits into certain customers' environments and, and provide a, a use case example as well. Um, it's definitely one of the top topics I hear, you know, frequently in terms of business challenges. I mean, through events like, you know, acquisition or, you know, just purchasing several different content repositories to solve a particular business need, as you outlined in insurance, you know, there could be, you know, content repositories tied to underwriting. There could be something, you know, on the back end tied to claims. You know, and, at the end of the day, you know, we're creating, you know, multiple systems that are managing unstructured information. You know, on this slide, there's a few vendors listed here that's just for, you know, exemplary purposes. Um, you know, it could be DocFinity, IBM FileNet Content Manager, or even Mobius, um, which, you know, we operate both in, in you know, main traditional old, uh, mainframe environments as well as uh, distributed environments, including the cloud. Um, you know, I think the challenge here is pretty obvious. You have employees, you know, in many cases in the thousands that are accessing uh, these different systems, you know, going across offices that are, you know, nationally or globally and logging into multiple systems with, you know, potentially different user IDs or different authentication methods. And they're looking for information that can be related to, you know, a specific customer or, you know, related to an event such as, you know, an exception process that they're doing or, or particular research or maybe some sort of e-discovery process that they're, they're looking at, right? You know, it's obviously not the most efficient and, you know, the best use of a, of a knowledge worker's time. Um, you know, we do have a client with a, a specific use case in, in the life insurance business that, you know, they sell, you know, annuities, mutual funds, and all of the different types of financial products. Um, for them, there are about 4,000 employees operating uh, in 132 offices across 23 states. So you can kind of see, you know, not only from a logistics perspective, but, you know, potentially even from a bandwidth perspective, because a lot of these are, you know, remote, uh, remote locations and, and you know, they may not have um, the access they need to every single thing that they uh, require from, from the corporate office. Um, what they told us is, you know, their biggest challenges was the long ramp up time actually for the back office employees at corporate as well as in their uh, field offices to be trained. And, you know, it, it creates confusion, you know, with the effort of accessing information across all these disparate systems, you know, depending on what their job function is, or maybe they, they hold multiple job functions, they, they don't always know where to go. Um, in this particular case, you know, it was about across about 10 different departments like accounting, human resource, finance compliance, annuities, and, you know, a major use case uh, within their call centers. Um, with all the typical document types, you know, an insurance company has invoices, commission reports, uh, policy pages, customer correspondence. You know, all of their users are accessing documents and content from multiple places. It's, you know, it's not really about any one of these particular content management management vendors on this slide or one content management repository. It's really about federation services to bring all that disparate information together, you know, to create an optimized and productive user experience for both you know, internal and, and in cases where, you know, that unstructured or, or document-based information is being presented to even to external users like us as consumers, 
uh, at the same time providing governance, you know, for that access to the information as well as, you know, the compliance that's needed on the back end for, for records management or retention capabilities. I think Eric, next, there we go. Uh, so this, this slide here, you know, expands off the story a bit in terms of um, what, uh, what, what, how ASG looks at um, uh, content services. Uh, this may be, you know, for the audience members, very familiar in pieces and parts of it uh, as it relates to, you know, your environment, right? There's, there's often multiple inputs from a paper perspective with, with scanning and capture technologies. Uh, you know, the integration of those into, into um, other ECM or collaboration type tools uh, that you see out there. Uh, some of those which are very prevalent uh, in, in environments like SharePoint, others that are more corporate standards like, uh, you know, an Alfresco or an open text uh, solution, and some things which kind of go virally as well, which can, can be things like Box, uh, which, which some folks kind of uh, at times, you know, Box or Dropbox look at it often as maybe shadow IT uh, because, you know, users will or departments may sign up for productivity or collaboration purposes uh, with those uh, particular tools. Um, as we look at, you know, how we federate not only about getting access into those other systems like like ECM tools or collaboration tools, but it's also about the ability to federate that information back out. So, you know, the user experience that, that we provide is not always uh, from our own, right? It, it can be uh, integrated into, you know, common business applications. Uh, oftentimes we see, you know, SAP or, or Workday or, or Salesforce or, or other types of uh, corporate standard applications that need to have document access to it, and you know we're not we know we're not we're not the end all be all, um, which is why we provide those federation services and an abstraction layer that allows us to get in, into those. In addition, uh, you know looking at more structured data sources like uh, data lakes or leveraging you know content that may have some structure to it or using some tools we have for analytics to provide structure to it. We can also, you know, provide extensions into visualization tools like Click or Tableau, which gives you the ability to have greater insight into unstructured information than, than probably ever before. Yeah, that, that's great, Kevin. I, I can see, you know, once you have all this information available to you, um, you know, I can see where, you know, you're coming from a variety of resources, so whether it's just purely documents or if it's data specifically and, and where that's housed. But um, I can see how this uh, utilizing Federation services will get the right information in the right person's hands um, at the right time. So I think that's really powerful stuff. Um, so let's let's move on to our our, our next uh, you know our next problem here. So once again, this is this is somewhat in an insurance flavor. So it talks about policy quote turnaround time. Think of this as a pre-sales effort. Uh, so really, any time that you have an inquiry that's made by a customer asking for a specific price or, or trying to conduct a transaction, um, and and we'll cover the actual onboarding of a new customer in just a few minutes. But the idea here is that once again, you know, a lot of these companies uh, are looking for ways to be able to gain market share, especially in this environment. Uh, for insurance for a long time, you know, they're having troubles competing because of a, a low interest rate environment, um, which is allowing the, their products to become highly commoditized. They feel like you can get auto insurance from any given, any given carrier and, and all the coverages are the same. Well, how do you really differentiate yourself? Um, a lot of that comes down to being able to have a quick speed to market. So, you know, a lot of uh, previous insurance companies were trying to spend ways um, to make their contracts unique. Um, and, and really, all, at the end of the day, all they ended up doing was just taking a longer amount of time for you to be able to get a quote for, for the policy you're looking for in the, first time, uh, in the first place. So speed to market is really what makes a big difference. So, so how do you improve speed to market? Well, let's, let's automate a lot of the clerical tasks it takes in order to be able to provide a, a, a quote or be able to provide a, um, a proposal for, for a solution. So really what this comes down to, you know, Kevin had mentioned the name knowledge workers, and we're going to continue to use that theme throughout the presentation. But the, you know, a knowledge worker, um, you know, could be someone who, you know, could be an underwriter, someone who's paid to assess risk um, and, and review risk. Uh, it's someone, it could be a claims examiner, who's someone to be able to review, review information given in front of them and, and make a decision whether to pay or deny or, or say that they need more information. 
But the idea is that you have someone who is reviewing information and making an educated decision on what to do next. Um, you didn't originally hire these people in order to do clerical work. You didn't hire them to be able to look at one screen, um, see what's on the, the information of a, a scanned application, and then enter it into your system of records, it's an underwriting system or a, a sales management system, whatever else. You want them to be able to review the information that's put in front of them. So you need to be able to automate the ingestion of, of different types of documents. Uh, you need to be able to automate the extraction of information off of those documents. Um, and when you get really advanced down the road, and we have customers that are all over the maturity spectrum when it comes to different types of documents, but um, further on down the road on that maturity spectrum, what you'll start to see is um, you can have automatic decisions being made for you. So the ones that come in that are an automatic no, well, we can automate that process for you. Uh, for for the, the opportunities to come in that are an automatic yes, and it really wouldn't be worth an underwriter's time or a knowledge worker's time to review, well, we can rubber stamp those ones and, and push them onto fulfillment as well. But at the end of the day, it's, it's freeing up your knowledge worker to be able to do more of what you're originally paying them to do, which is, which is review information and make a decision. So, you know, what does this look like from a technology or a practical standpoint? Well, um, you know, we, we kind of touched on this a little bit in the Federation slide where we talked about a, a, a capture solution. So, you know, you know, for the longest time, capture solutions or intelligent capture solutions or OCR solutions, whatever you'd like to call them, um, had really become kind of commoditized. A lot of them had, you know, were utilizing the same OCR engines. And at the end of the day, they're going to be able to classify what type of document comes in, um, extract, a, extract a, a type, you know, extract the information off that document, validate it if necessary, and then push it through to your system of record. Well, nowadays, uh, you're starting to see some, some vendors that are coming out that actually have some very unique propositions and some very unique solutions. So uh, ZN and ASG, collectively, we've, we've got solutions put together to not be able to handle, not only to be able to handle uh, handwritten text, I'm sorry, machine printed text, but we can also handle handwritten text as well. So for that insurance company or that vendor who's still sending you purchase orders um, that have some handwriting on them, well, we can automate that for you as well. Uh, so once again, we can automate the, the extraction of the data. We can extract, uh, we can automate the, the classification of the type of document. We can file it in the proper place. Um, and then furthermore, we can validate the information that's coming off that form compared to internal databases before it's sent on to your, your fulfillment or your records management system as well. So there's a number of different ways that we can take the clerical portion out of your knowledge worker's task on a day-to-day -day basis. And that way they can get back to what you originally hired them for, which is be able to re review information and make a decision. Kevin, any, any additional thoughts on, uh, on automating uh, inputs or, you know, being able to free up knowledge workers? Yeah, I would say from a technology perspective, you know, the capability has changed greatly. Um, it continues to evolve even in the past few years. And the, the amount of intelligence that can be gathered from, you know, analog inputs, especially uh, no, no matter the source, we're not talking here just about, um, uh, you know, traditional document scanning. But you know, importing documents, uh, you know, file upload directly from clients, as I referenced earlier, you know, the use of mobile applications, uh, it's really becoming much more prevalent in, in terms of integrating those into uh, corporate, uh, you know, processes. You know, it's not not just related to insurance, but really across the board. So definitely a mega trend, I see. Yeah, no, that, that's a fantastic point, and, and sometimes we'll see that for analytics projects as well. Um, we were working with a, a large insurance company out of Wisconsin several years ago where they wanted to review all of their um, evidence of insurability forms. So these were the forms where you check yes or no of, you know, have you had cancer ever in your life? Um, you know, do you have heart disease or, you know, are, are you considered obese? You know, the, the, the yes or no questions. And they wanted to do a full review of the last 30 years of those documents. And we actually looked at this as an analytics project and said, all right, well, we'll tally up all your yeses and no's. Um, and we'll give you back the actual data for that so you can build a data model around that and help build an automated underwriting solution around it. Um, there's a number of different ways that you can utilize these capture and extraction technologies uh, to be able to, to work for you. So, you know, Kevin said, it's not just traditional paper anymore. So, good point. Uh, so, moving on to the next one. So, we, we talked about pre-sales efforts. So, once, once they actually say yes, they want to move forward. Okay, great. Uh, so, what's it take to actually onboard a new customer? Um, so once again, this is this is somewhat of an insurance flavor. But let's talk about the concept as a whole. So banks have to do this, insurance companies have to do this. Um, you could even look at this as new employee onboarding. So if you're hiring someone for the first time, what are all the steps that need to take place 
in order for them to be finally set up as a, as a regular um, organized entity within your or, uh, organization. So, you know, we understand, we talked about the name change application earlier, uh, but it's the same thing when you're applying for, for a new policy as well, or, or say, for instance, if it's an insurance company and you've bought home and auto and, and maybe an accident policy with them as well, well, those were underwritten in, in different systems. Uh, those are going to be, in some cases, depending on your company, might be billed. You might get two separate bills for that or three separate bills, depending on the, on the coverage. Um, you know, so there's ways that we can help improve the overall onboarding experience around that. Um, and, and one thing, in utilizing some of the, uh, the capture technologies that we talked about earlier, um, you can actually you know, feed that system downstream into multiple systems of record where it really makes a big difference. So, you know, traditional, you know, I, I personally had worked at an insurance company beforehand where, um, you know, you might submit for new policies. Well, that information goes to seven different people on seven different teams, and they're all manually keying that in. Uh, the likelihood for error and data entry is extremely high at that point, which leads to poor customer experiences. So I'm going to dive into a, a quick case study around that. Uh, so this same insurance company, um, so they handle an employee benefit types of insurance. So your, your medical insurance and your disabilities and, you know, all the stuff that renews come January 1. Well, the majority of their industry renews come January 1. So they do 60% of their business in the fourth quarter every year. So these are all brand new policies that are coming in, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of the revenue that are all coming in in the fourth quarter. And their customers, which might be policy administrators or individual policy holders, uh, all they're looking for is a, is a copy of their first bill for it to be accurate, and they want a copy of their insurance certificate or their contract to know that they're covered. Well, when you're doing 60% of your business in the fourth quarter, that's a lot of new customers that you need to onboard and put through those seven different systems. Um, and in which case, the, the company that we were working with at that time, uh, you know, oftentimes they were not producing a, a copy of that first bill or that contract for the January 1 effective date until April sometimes, um, which case, you know, if you're, if you're looking, not receiving a new policy or bill for several months on end, you're starting with a poor customer experience, um, in which case you're not going to be, you know, maintaining that customer come renewal. So, you know, we worked with them in order to try and automate a lot of the ingestion of those, those new sales documents, and we're able to, uh, you know, reduce the, the processing time from, you know, multiple days down to just multiple minutes. Uh, in which case, all of a sudden, that, that clogged drain that, that is their new business processing all of a sudden became much more free-flowing, and they're able to handle that influx of new business that happens to them every year. And once again, this, this can apply to a, a number of different industries as well, but if you have, whether it be seasonal fluctuations or just even it takes you a while to get a new customer onboarded, there are definitely some large efficiencies that can come from this. Uh, moving on, so let's, you know, this is going to be a bit more around... Uh, this is around insurance claims, but really this is around, you know, any time that you've got additional inquiries coming from your customers and, and if you've got uh, service level agreements where you need to avoid fines or, or regulations, um, you, need, you need a way to be able to capture the information that's coming in, uh, you need a way to be able to properly uh, assess the, the risk that's coming in as well or the, the dollar amounts are going to be paid out. There's a lot of checks and balances that need to come in. And we understand also that within a claims process or even a review process, oftentimes information comes in later. So you need a way to be able to automatically ingest some of those documents and, and ingest some of that information so that way you're making an accurate uh, assessment of uh, an accurate assessment of the risk that you're reviewing and, and being able to make a proper decision. And oftentimes uh, documents that come in later, uh, you need a way to automatically associate those with the case that you're already working on. Uh, or need a way to be able to review that information quickly, and oftentimes it still leads to a lot of manual data entry and a lot of uh, clerical errors as well. So, so that's it. We're, we're going to throw to another case study here. Uh, Kevin, I'm going to let you take this one away. Great. Thanks, Eric. And, you know, the, the context of this case study is, is, is really about um, data as much as it is, you know, document process, right? Um, <clears throat> You know, claims is obviously a major function in, in any insurance uh, company. Uh, you know, you can relate it for folks that are on the phone, you know, from different industries to, you know, some sort of uh, exception or back office process that you may have. Um, but in this particular case, this company's objective was to, you know, just eliminate risk and the costs associated with making errors on processing claims and ultimately sending, you know, the claim checks or the payments. In, in their situation, the controls that they needed to manage, the policy verification and other steps in the claim processes were, were very manual and subject to error. 
you know, al although they're using systems to do this and not necessarily all in, you know, what we've been referring to as analog sources, um, you know, it, invalid and incorrect payments were, were literally, you know, going out the door. You know, in that case, you know, that, that's equated to dollars. <clears throat> so, you know, being a being a customer of ours, we, you know, we were contracted in to work with them and, and look at how to kind of fix and address these problems and, you know, if you will, plug some of the holes in the dam. And uh, ultimately what we ended up with was looking at a solution for content analytics more so than something related to document processing or routing or workflow, right? Uh, in, in that case, um, they leveraged a product from us called uh, ASG Audit Analytics Services. Uh, they're doing, you know, performance of real-time audit balancing, reconciliation of processes across all of the different digital and, and now included into their analog uh, inputs as well. In, in their case, it included multiple claim systems, comparing all the data feeds across systems like the general ledger, other inputs coming from their customers. Uh, the results were pretty interesting. Uh, you know, their immediate result was an 85% reduction in the time that was taken uh, to, to spent, that was spent pre prepping uh, data and producing their uh, their checks or payments. Um, since that initial implementation, which was about two years ago, um, we've learned the process is now 100% automated, so they've eliminated a lot of paper from their process, and uh, you know. I think this is kind of a feather in the cap of, of the client is that, you know, what they say to us is they will not pay a claim whilst their audit, our audit analytics services approves the payment. You know, obviously, this is, you know, a huge ROI. You can relate that to a lot of other organizations. But, uh, you know, since then, they've even applied this to 20 additional processes outside of claims, and it's it's uh, proved to be quite reliable and, and uh, produce great financial results for them. Yeah, that's that's a heck of a stamp of approval if they're saying that they won't pay unless audit and analytics said so. Um, clearly, they've you know they've had a, a long track record with you guys, and they put a lot of trust in the software. So that's that's fantastic. Absolutely. So so going on to the the last kind of leverage point, um, modern ways to work with legacy systems. So this is going back to talking about working with your internal customers, um, so your employees. Um, so you know. We talked about the theme around you. You know, we have a, an aging workforce that are utilize that are used to working on, on certain types of applications, um, and a new workforce coming in that's, that's used to certain types of user experiences. Um, but you know, we also recognize that a lot of the, the industries and the companies that we work with, um, you know, it doesn't make sense for them to rip and replace 20-year-old technology. Um, you know, Kevin, uh, our partners at, at ASG. Um, you know, have technology that's been around for decades, and it's insanely reliable. Um, but, you know, in, in, pre in a previous life, the majority of it was running off of a mainframe. And we have some customers that Kevin and I meet with today that say, you know what, mainframe works for us. It's, it's very reliable. It's cheap to maintain. Um, we have no plans to get off of the mainframe anytime soon. Okay, so then our, our conversation shifts. And it's like, okay, well, what are better ways for you to be able to interact with the mainframe? Um, what are some ways that we can help automate some of the, the things that are some of the outputs from that you're getting from mainframe? So you can still maintain those systems, uh, but you can also provide your workforce a simplified user interface. Um, I worked for a number of years with, uh, with employees that only knew how to work mainframe. They knew all the hotkeys on the keyboard. Uh, they would work in the billing system. But oftentimes you would get the, the thing, uh, you would get a, a response of, well, we need to make a change. Okay, well, I'll put the change in now, but it's not going to go in effect until 9 p.m. tonight when the mainframe runs its update cycle. And, and that's something that you'll still need to work around. But we can work collectively with you as an organization to understand what those requirements are and, and how to best build a solution that still allows you to maintain your rock solid technology that gives you a better way to interact with those as well. Um, so that said, you know, this is a, kind of a simplistic uh, way of looking at it. And we, we talked around federated, um, you know, federation earlier, but when it comes to your internal customers, you know, so let's just kind of look at this from a left to right. So you can take multiple inputs, whether it be a mainframe application, a thin client, a thick client, whatever, whatever it is that are your legacy technologies that you're, you're used to using. And especially you'll see these for companies that have acquired um, other companies over the years and they're trying to consolidate these technologies. What you'll often see is you can get one simplified user interface, whether that be an internal portal or another user interface. We've got a, a number of different ways to do this. It will take the inputs and the feeds and the data and information from those types of applications. 
uh, you're, you as a user are just providing information into a simplified user interface on the uh, that you see on the screen. And then on the back end, it speaks back to the you know the mainframe applications, the thick and thin clients via APIs or robotic process automation. Uh, there's a number of different ways that we're able to interact with those systems in order to give you your desired result. Kenny, or sorry, Kevin, any any thoughts here? Yeah, I like to think of this in terms of of you know contextual based uh, content access, right? Just from an access perspective, and. You know, it's about putting you know content in the right place at the right time, no matter what the source is. But you know, whether that means integration into you know legacy applications, uh, whether that means integration into internal these internal applications, or or driving content that is being created dynamically, or content that may be static, that's used uh, for for customer experience. I mean, th those are again, you know, large types of uh, trends that 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 I see are, are just changing in the whole customer experience uh, realm. Yeah, that's, that's a very valid point. Uh, so, so those are kind of the, the five major points um, in terms of what we see to help, you know, kind of an 80-20 lift of what you can do to really help automate, uh, you know, the complex document processing that you have, um, in which case some of the other more, you know, niche ones are going to be a bit more complex and we can work with you on, on those individually. Uh, but I'm going to let Kevin talk a little bit more about uh, his company, ASG, because they provide so many different types of solutions and, and types of technologies as well. But, uh, Kevin, I'll let you take it away. Great. Thanks, Eric. Um, yeah, as, as Eric mentioned, we, we certainly um, uh, have, you know, unmatched reliability and performance. Uh, if you look at some of our, our long-term clients over the course of literally decades, uh, you know, running on multiple platforms from, from the portability side, uh, you know, we see, you, you know, massive amounts of volume that this, this process. Um, in some cases, uh, just from a document perspective, you know, millions and millions of documents per day that, that are produced and managed uh, by ASG uh, Mobius Solutions. Um, the portability side is interesting. You know, we've certainly over the years have kept up with, you know, what are all the uh, uh, infrastructure requirements that, that companies have, and now in you know today's world, that obviously includes uh, both um, public and private and hybrid cloud environments. Uh, the portability side not only extends to the infrastructure side, but also to the usability side. Uh, we are very mobile friendly in terms of our uh, development capability, uh, as well as even even uh, delivering those solutions out of the box for, for mobile access. Um, over the years, no question, unmatched governance uh, control for uh, supporting things, you know, initiatives like uh, records management, compliance. Uh, the the big um, you know buzzwords today are really around privacy and and uh, you know enabling individuals to have control over their information, not only to know what companies keep about them, but also in certain instances, based on regulation, being able to. Uh, request the right to be forgotten, right? So things like GDPR and, and California privacy laws that, that have come into play. Um, you know, we certainly keep keep uh, uh, innovation going in those directions as well. Um, in, in terms of being good to work with, I, I think that extends very well into our partner ecosystem. So folks like Zia on the line, but other solution providers as well that, that do some very specific things uh, for certain industries or for specific use cases around content. Um, we have uh, incredible capability with, with our extended network. And, and I will say, I, I hear this and I see this frequently, we, we do have a very low overhead in terms of what it takes to, to maintain and operate a, an ASG content solution. Um, I see this frequently within our clients, kind of going back to the slides I had earlier with the, the kind of different vendor mixes on there. Uh, you know, we, we often have, you know, just part-time resources that are uh, involved in the care and, feed, care and feeding of these uh, Mobius solutions. So, um, unmatched in that regard as well. In, in terms of, of how we develop and, and, and uh, create our products, um, Again, we, we, we follow, you know, what the industry requires in terms of infrastructure needs, such as modernizing to the cloud, uh, you know, the, the regulatory pressures that are put on our clients in, in really virtually every industry, right? You know, things going back to, 
um, you know, banking and financial services specific requirements, but think and other regulations that, that came up, you know, a, a dozen or so years ago around Sarbanes Oxley and all these privacy controls. You know, we really develop around uh, uh, those issues because they are, you know, the most important to our clients. Um, in, in terms of efficiency, uh, we're always about the productivity. So, again, you know, today's uh, some of today's theme around federation, the ability to, to get access into those knowledge workers' hands when they need it and where they need it is vitally important. So we, we develop our, our technology around that and, and and do that by creating, you know, great experiences for the clients, whether that is through our own interfaces that we deliver or, again, through the integration efforts that are needed. You know, it's all about reducing the clicks and reducing the amount of time that's needed in order to get where you need and the information that you need in the right time at the right place. Um, and as I talked about the audit analytics capability, it's really about looking at, you know, what does unstructured data provide in terms of business value and, and being able to look at uh, different types of documents or, or different unstructured content that may not have been evaluated before in terms of, you know, business analytics or using it to drive information into data lakes, which can be used to, you know, drive insights and, and, uh, and other, you know, analytic type opportunities uh, for data that, that, that may be, you know, hidden in this content, right? So we're, we're definitely huge in that direction. And, uh, you know, we've, we've proven it over and over again. So I appreciate it. Thanks, Eric. Um, just a, a little bit of a, of a chart here in terms of what our uh, core competencies are in the, in the content services space. Um, you know, it's leveraged and, and anchored by Mobius, a, a technology that has been around since, as Eric said, decades, literally since 1981. Um, you know, extensions into those uh, uh, until in, into those content services include uh, workflow capabilities. Uh, data mining capabilities. We, we talked heavily today about the integration and, and unified federation. Uh, and separate repository services for managing, migrating, moving uh, content between platforms, managing that information for its life cycle and needs based on cost, directly related to uh, the type of storage that it's on, uh, whether that is you know, on-premise or, or in a cloud or hybrid cloud environment. Um, for some of our customers, they process so much information in the Mobius that, that you know, literally the, the, the storage that they put it on has, has a direct effect into the overall management cost of the application. Uh, from, a, from an information governance perspective, uh, certainly being able to uh, adhere to, you know, local and, and, and other type of um, state and federal government standards in terms of retention capabilities, performing dynamic retention on, on documents based on events, as well as uh, uh, overall integration into other systems that allow us to be triggered by um, uh, corporate applications for managing data that's in our repository and potentially other repositories as well. Uh, spoke about the use case for, for audit analytics. Uh, you know, I, I, I describe audit analytics as a comparative analysis tool that uh, is very much like a Swiss Army knife. So the ability for, you know, any data to be analyzed, compared, uh, any sort of mathematical equation be applied to it to determine an outcome. That outcome could be something like a, a balancing uh, work process. It could be something that is identifying exceptions in the process. And then once those are done, being able to, you know, trigger an uh, some sort of an event, right? Do we initiate workflows? Do we, you know, send messages? Do we insert data into a database so that it gets picked up uh, by some other downstream process, right? And then certainly content distribution. So, you know, it's not only about creating and managing information within a repository, but it's also about how does that information get out? So we have, you know, an omni-channel approach to distribution of information, whether that's through, you know, traditional, you know, print mechanisms, uh, not so much these days, but still does exist is, is faxing, uh, email distribution, uh, document creation, document translation, and, and being able to push content into areas that it needs to go uh, outside of, of our ecosystem. And that's not, you know, purely just the, the content in, in, in whole, 
but it can be pieces and parts of the content because we have such unique capabilities to analyze and look at information that is contained within documents or within unstructured information, we can piece and part that information out and, and distribute it as needed. Thanks, Eric. Great. Thanks, Kevin. So uh, as a quick uh, wrap up in terms of who ZIA is, so uh, you know, ZIA at, at its very core is a system integrator. So we, we've been in business now for over 17 years, uh, headquartered out of Boulder, Colorado, but we have presences all across the country and in some cases uh, other parts of the, the globe as well. Uh, but we partner with what we consider best in breed technologies. Um, and after everything Kevin just went over, I, I think you can see why we consider ASG one of the best in breed technologies. They've been around for several decades and their product continues to to change and mature along with the times. Uh, so we, we work with them. We, we really see a lot of value of not only the, the legacy platform that they've had around, which has been since modernized, but you know it has a um, you know fantastic reputation in terms of uptime and reliability. And we see a lot of value in that, and we work with uh, you know uh, very many, so many customers, uh, large and small, uh, that have gotten value over over Mobius over the years. But we love where they're going in the future as well. Um, you know, you're going to see a lot more coming from them around, you know, automation of, of various tasks and, and workflows as well. Um, and we're working with them on the development for a number of those things. So we're, we're very excited with that. Um, but like I said, they're, they're one of many partners that we work with. But as a system integrator, we look at the larger picture um, of what, what works for your organization. So we can help work with you to understand your, your current needs. Um, we have, uh, you know, tried and true consultants that can work with you to help understand your business requirements. Uh, or can help establish business requirements if, if you need that assistance. Uh, but we're, we're really looking to make sure that the technologies that you have, whether it be technical debt or even new technologies that you're considering, where it fits in your overall ecosystem, what are the what are the, the timeframes that you're looking to you know have those things implemented by, and we'll work with you to make sure that your your projects are delivered not only on schedule but within budget as well. So, um, so as we wrap up here, just a few next steps. Uh, we, we do have a, a white paper on ZIAConsulting.com around accelerating the claims process. If you're not in the insurance industry, please still check out ZIAConsulting.com. Uh, we work with you know, dozens of verticals, and we, we have case studies that apply to a number, of different, uh, uh, a number of different verticals, but it's really around what we talked about today, around automating different processes, uh, whether it be document or data management. Um, but you know, look, there's, there's a, a workshop that we conduct together between ASG and ZIA called our, our Digital Transformation Workshop. And we understand the word digital transformation can mean a, a dozen different things to dozen different organizations. But that's part of the beauty of the workshop is we want to understand what is, you know, what is the digital transformation journey that your organization is on. And the workshop actually can be tailored and, and molded to fit those specific needs as well. So we'd, we'd love to set up a, a discovery call to discuss your specific needs. Um, and what we can do around uh, trying to you know, put together a workshop that, that fits those needs for you as well. So that said, I, I'll throw back to Kevin Crane. That's Eric House from Zia Consulting and Kevin Bender from ASG Technologies. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your comments today. You know, I I spent 14 years in the industry in insurance industry, and what you talked about today, I think, really hit on some really key things. That one call resolution. Uh, for things as simple yet so important as a name change and improving the policy quote time uh, and the, the ability to do things like automatic decisions and then that frees up my workers to do things that add more value and improving onboarding and new policies and the implications of the downstream process and how to automate some of that. And it really gets down to improving key metrics that um, are indicators of process performance. And what you talked about, I think, is just so important. Now, in addition to insurance, help us make maybe a bit of the leap forward into other areas. What other applications or use cases should our audience also consider and what other industries and applications? You know, I, this, this is Eric. Uh, I would say that a lot of what we talked about today, you know, are, are problems that you'll see across multiple verticals. So, you know, insurance and financial services, sure. Um, I think those are, are, are pretty easy to apply. But, you know, whether it be if you're if you're in the education um, industry, you know, whether it be onboarding new, new students or onboarding new uh, employees or, or new people coming in and out of your system, uh, you need ways to be able to automate those, those types of processes. Um, and a lot of what we apply today can can apply, or a lot of what we talked about today can apply to, to multiple verticals as well. Even manufacturing, 
Um, you, you know, you're going to need quotes for a, uh, a certain specific instance of what needs to get done or, or, or a specific type of project. Well, you need ways to be able to automate the ingestion of that quote and be able to provide a, a quick response. So I think you can see this applied to a number of different verticals. Now, one of our audience members asked, how do we identify content fraud in the scan and data extraction process? Kevin Bender, do you have, do you have thoughts on that one specifically? Yep. Yeah, I thought I would take that one. Um, so, so as it relates to fraud, um, we have the ability to you know, constantly monitor content um, uh, which is arriving into our system or, or any system uh, really in any format. So typically, you know, unstructured information coming in, let's say, you know, in the insurance case, some, someone is trying to uh, make a fraudulent claim, right? Um, we have, you know, once we identified and gathered that information through some sort of capture or, you know, metadata identification process, we then have the ability to, you know, look into other systems to ensure validation of that information, uh, to look at multiple sources and create, you know, what we refer to as rule sets that, you know, may have multiple steps that need to be gone through to determine that. I, I will say, you know, generally, uh, you know, as it relates to content arriving, and I don't know the particular use case the, the person asking the question is, is looking at, but it's going to require evaluating content, looking at other sources of information, building a rule set that, that determines whether or not that it, it falls within the threshold of fraud. And we can set, you know, all different types of, of thresholds and rules around those, those individual types of processes. Uh, so hope that answers the question. Definitely would like to learn more. And then, no, that, that's, that's great, Kevin. And one thing to add on is once you've co compiled all that information or you, you've, you've identified a certain um, you know, threshold or, you know, something to, to, to sign off on the, or to get the, the warning uh, belt going. Um, you know, there's also a number of tools that we can provide as well to help you analyze that data. So you start to see, you know, compiling the data and, and cross-referencing it against other resources. All of a sudden you can start to do the investigation side as well internally. We've got a number of different resources that can allow you to visualize that data and really gain some insights out of it as well. Now, one thing you folks talked about was the reality uh, that of the main, the presence of, of a mainframe or legacy systems in many in, in many cases. I, I can totally see how you would encounter that thought. Uh, you know, look, we have the mainframe; it's working. We're not going to get rid of it anytime soon. Yet, the yet there are still many opportunities and need to modernize our approaches. Can you give us one suggestion of how you, we might be able to do that? While, while still maintaining a mainframe? Yes. In other words, how can I, if I have, if I'm in a situation where I want to start getting the efficiency gains of federation and I want to do start automating more things in terms of one call resolution or improving uh, my processes for customer experience, uh, yet I still have a commitment to these older legacy systems. So can you give us one example of perhaps of a use case or a quick example of how you were able to bridge that gap between ne the need for a modern approach and the reality of still needing to exist with legacy applications and systems? Yeah, absolutely. A absolutely. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, I, I'm thinking of a use case uh, in, in a very large energy company that's a client of ours in that particular industry, you know, mainframes seem to be prevalent and to your point, uh, Kevin, not really going away anytime soon, although there are initiatives for that. Um, and, and as you look at, you know, users in a, in a call center, uh, this particular client's got about 6,000 uh, call center employees that, that are across multiple regions and, you know, obviously 24 hours a day in that market. Um, they have actually enabled their their mainframe users and their customer service reps uh, with some programming interface directly into Mobius for accessing all the things that they need, one of their uh, outage information, customer billing information, and and they've done that um, really by by doing a, just a little bit of custom coding into their uh, mainframe applications that allows then a you know a if you will, a Windows experience uh, accessing, 
the specific information that they need uh, from from the Mogus repository. So, yeah, they, they, they are they are definitely leveraging that. And in many cases too, in other industries, you know, you think about where the data, you know, is coming from. You know, in many cases, if you're doing business with large banks, you you know the data that you receive as a result of your experience on the mobile app or uh, through their web interface, that information originated in a mainframe, right? Whether it's statements or, you know, um, uh, other loan documents that you've received, a lot of times those are those are the source of it. And, uh, you know, they're, they're leveraged every day uh, with solutions yes. like Mobius on, on any platform, right? Yes, very so, good. That's Kevin Bender with ASG Technologies and Eric House from Zia Consulting. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time and your comments today. What a fantastic session. Now, so we're much. running, we're, we're, we're coming to the end of our uh, event today. I will be getting back to Kevin and Eric for a closing thought or two, but did want to remind everyone that we encourage you to download this new tip sheet that we just did in partnership with ASG, Building a Strong Records Man Management Foundation. And I can tell you it's packed with full of uh, great recommendations. The link to download is in the resources box or when you download the PDF of today's slides, you'll have a URL there. You can also find it at aim.org slash resources. And we know that 2020 has been difficult for many of us, and we know times are tough, and that's why for the month of September, we're letting you name your price for membership in AIM. It's normally $179. You can connect with thousands of your peers at a price that works best for you. So please go to aim.org slash promem. That's A-I-I-M dot O-R-G slash promem for professional membership. It's for new members only, but you can get your membership at a price that works for you as our thank you and just supporting everyone out in the, our industry. So with that today, I would like to thank our sponsors, ASG Technologies and Zia Consulting. Without your support, we couldn't be able, we wouldn't be able to bring these kinds of educational programs to our audience. So thank you so much. Now, Eric and Kevin, any closing thoughts for our event today? Eric, how about you? Hey, Kevin. Yeah, what I would say at Zia Consulting, you know, we, we've, uh, we've been in business for 17 years now, but I mentioned this earlier. There, there's, a, there's a concept that we call the content, uh, content management maturity spectrum. And there's the old adage of you need to walk before you can, or you need to crawl before you walk, before you run, uh, before you jump over a building, something along those lines. And, and the point there is that Zia works with customers uh, all over the spectrum. So whether it be if you're just now, you know, putting together your first document management solution compared to a shared drive that you're doing before, or you've been doing workflow for years and you really need to automate those last couple steps and put together a rules engine to be able to automate some of your, your decision-making processes so your, your uh, knowledge workers can do what they're originally hired to do a bit more, we can work with you on, on a number of different levels and we can really truly add value um, on a number of different levels as well. So no matter where you're at um, within your journey, we're, we're able to help you there. So we'd be looking forward to helping you with that. And Kevin? Yeah, I would just add to that, Eric, that, uh, you know, as a great value partner of ours, um, you know, we, we are the obviously the manufacturer and provide those solutions. And, and I think that, you know, for, for you know, a very significant number of, of content use cases. Uh, you know, we, we are able to fit those needs, and you know, we are focused on uh, driving, you know, efficiency gains, productivity, and trying to do that at the absolute lowest cost possible in this industry. And uh, we've got a great track record of doing it, and, and uh, folks like Zia have, have always helped us along the way. Very good. That is Kevin Bender and Eric House. Gentlemen, thank you so much. And that will do it for today's AIM webinar. Thank you so much for being with us. We will look for you next time. This is Kevin Crane, along with Sean Magali and all the rest of the team at AIM. Thank you, thanking you for being a part of our event today, and we'll see you next time.